Beating rocks, beating rocks. Do 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 do. Beating rocks. Hi guys, it's Rebecca from the Garden of the Gods Visitor and Nature Center. I want to wish you all a happy winter solstice. Do you know what a winter solstice is? Well, from a scientific standpoint, it means today's the day that we get the least amount of sunlight and the most amount of darkness because of the way we're tilted on our axis and in the rotation around the sun. But that also means that every day after today, we'll gradually get brighter and longer as we make our way towards summer. The solstice also has a really cool historical past in a lot of cultures. And today we're gonna to take a look at that in the book, The Shortest Day. In late autumn, in the northern part of the world, squirrels hide nuts, foxes grow thick fur coats, and flocks of birds fly to warmer places. The sun rises later each morning and sets earlier each evening. Each day it appears lower in the southern sky. As the sun gets lower and lower, the north gets less and less daylight. The air grows colder. Chickadees fill their feathers with fluff to keep warm. Woodchucks hibernate in their burrows, and white-tailed deer nuzzle through the snow to find the last blades of grass. On short winter days, children bundle in warm clothes and walk through frosty white world, dragging long shadows behind them. On long winter nights, families eat dinner while it's dark outside. Children wonder why the days will get long again, so they can play outside after dinner like they did in the summer. In the north, on or around December 21st, the sun reaches its lowest point in the horizon, making that day the shortest day of the year. Like all days, December 21st has 24 hours, but it's called the shortest day because it has the fewest hours of daylight. The shortest day, called the winter solstice, is the beginning of winter, and in some places, winter means cold, nose-nipping weather. The earth tilts as it moves around the sun, when the northern part of the Earth tilts away from the sun, the north gets less heat and sunlight than the southern half. Long ago, people didn't understand how the Earth tilts and moves around the sun. They didn't understand why each day has less sunshine than the day before. Some believe that the evil spirits made the sun go away. People feared that the sun wouldn't shine on them anymore, making their world cold and dreary dark. They needed the sun's warmth and light so did their plants, which they needed for food. They held ceremonies that lasted for weeks to persuade their gods to bring the sun back. Over the years, people noticed that after the short days, the days gradually got longer. Joyous people bathed in the sun's warmth and light. They celebrated their harvests. About 5,000 years ago, people who studied the sky noticed that the days after the sun set in different places on the western horizon. They discovered that when the sun set furthest south, that was the shortest day. Those early astronomers planned to mark the shortest day. Then each year, people would know when the days would start getting longer again. On the day when the sun reached its southernmost point in the horizon, the astronomers carried out their plan. Workers stacked stones to frame the setting sun. They made a special opening in a keyhole, or like the eye of a needle. When the setting sun's rays beamed through that opening, people knew that the shortest day was over. Days gradually got longer for the next six months. When the sun appeared farthest in the north, its rays shone through another keyhole. People knew it was the longest day of the year, the first day of summer. In China, over 3,000 years ago, astronomers measured shadows to determine the shortest day. The longest shadows appeared on the shortest day because the sun was at the lowest point in the sky. They knew that as the sun appeared higher in the sky, the shadows would get shorter and the days would get longer. Over 2,000 years ago, Romans celebrated the shortest day with festivals and merrymaking. They gave evergreen branches to friends as a sign of good luck. Evergreen wreaths decorated their doors, since these plants stayed green when others turned brown. They reminded the Romans of the coming spring. 
Mistletoe and holly hung in their homes because plants that survived the harsh winter were symbols of life. Many people believe these plants would bring strength to their families. About a thousand years ago, Europeans celebrated the winter solstice. Druid priests of England and Ireland decorated oak trees with golden apples and candles to represent the harvest and light. In Sweden, a festival of light celebrated the return of longer days. On St. Lucia's days, girls wore crowns of evergreen and candles to rekindle the sun's fire. As they delivered warm buns to family and friends, boys went from door to door singing to the neighbors for a few coins. Around the same time in history, the Incas of Peru marked the shortest day with a festival in honor of the sun. At dawn, when the sun first appeared, shouts of happiness rang out. Then the Incas used a shiny surface to reflect the sun's rays onto fluffy dry cotton. The sun heated the cotton and made it burst into flames. They carried the fire to their temples and kept it burning on the altars all year because it came from one of their gods, the sun. Today, people still celebrate the beginning of winter by decorating their houses, lighting the darkness, gathering together, and exchanging gifts. They no longer worry that the sun will disappear forever. People knew that the days got colder when their part of the earth tilts away from the sun. They know that their days get shorter when the sun appears lower in the sky. People celebrate the shortest day because longer days follow. Flocks of birds will return, seedling oak trees will sprout, and children can play outside after dinner. For more than 5,000 years, people have welcomed the winter solstice because it's a new beginning. And that's the end of our story. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about the winter solstice and I hope you enjoy that extra sunshine that's sure to come. Have a great day and I'll see you next week.